So I used to not be able to grow a beard, like at all, <laughs> as you can see right here on the screen right now, like the rest of my family, no spectacular genes in terms of facial hair, a couple hairs along the, in, you know, the chin strap there, a couple hairs on the mustache, a little bit of an underlip going on, every, everything else, pretty much barren. What you see right here is like a month's worth of untouched growth. Yeah, <laughs> and within a year and a half of applying minoxidil on my face, yes, just a year and a half, I managed to achieve what I have right now, which is obviously spectacular. And this is not a product of time. Uh, no one in my family has the capability of growing something like this. This is indeed a byproduct of minoxidil, and uh, th there's no possible way I could have transitioned from that to this just by growing it out. No way. The coverage does not match up whatsoever. So uh, in my minoxidil beard transformation video, I kind of go through my whole transformation picture by picture, uh, you know, give a little bit of commentary as much as I can and the captions. But what I've never actually done is give vocal commentary, add my sexy voice on top of the pictures, give you guys a little extra meat, a little extra context, give you the side effects I was feeling in certain parts of my transformation, give you guys uh, my mental state in certain parts and my doubts, my fears, everything. Hopefully it gives you guys some motivation going into your monoxyl beer transformation regardless of where you are within it. So chapter one aka pre monoxidal as you can see in a lot of these photos, um, kind of an awkward guy growing up, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> um, kind of funny looking, a lot of people thought I was attractive or whatever. Personally, I think a lot. I think I look a lot better now, uh, just saying. Uh, a lot of the photos you see were of me when I was, uh, you know, in my late high school years, um, spanning all the way up to my uh, first year of university and uh, Actually, I started Minoxidil, uh, I think it was uh, January 2016, if I'm not mistaken, and I had kind of just dropped out of university at that point. Uh, I suppose I just kind of stumbled uh, upon Minoxidil. It's, uh, it's kind of interesting how that happened. I wasn't looking for it, but um, once I realized that people were clearly getting results on it, I think I found it via Al Alpha Destiny, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, Alpha Destiny was the first person that kind of, um, you know, introduced that to me. And I'm like, oh, okay. So then I, I, I looked more into it. Didn't join, join the Minox Beard spot yet. I just, uh, um, you know, just decided, hey, let's, uh, let's buy some of this Minox. They'll see what it does for me. And uh, I didn't really see any re results until about month three. Um, maybe there was some micro results uh, happening from month uh, one to three. But uh, if they were there, they were minimal. And I don't have pictures of it because for some reason, I like I, I didn't think much would come of it. I didn't really think that documenting your minoxidil beard transformation was a normal thing to do. Um, you know, I should have thought of that. But hey, you know, hindsight is twenty twenty. It's I don't uh, shame myself for that whatsoever. So um, the first kind of picture I have here when I really started realizing, oh shit, this is actually working. <laughs> I'm like, maybe I should start documenting this to, uh, a little better. It's not like uh, as good as the documentation by, you know, the bearded dragon and a lot of those guys that really, really got sharp pictures and you can see the um, the progress happening over time and it's just, you, you're very aware of what's going on. Uh, my video is not nearly as good as theirs, in my opinion, and I don't think it deserves the traction that it got. But that first three months was uh, when I really started to realize, oh shit, you know, like I have hairs coming all the way up my cheeks that were not there before. I looked terrible at the time. <laughs> I don't know why, but I decided to shave my head. I think um, it was um, kind of a, I wanted to shave, I, I wanted to save money type of thing. Uh, I was sick of getting haircuts. I had, I think I was working at Subway at the time. Uh, <laughs> you know, it was just kind of a sad period in my life where I wanted to start a business, but um, I just wasn't there yet. I was just kind of, 
engulfed by sloth, uh, working at Subway, kind of uh, meaningless type of existence at the point at the time. Um, unfortunately, I was uh, in a bad place in many, in, by many, uh, you know, standards there. So going into month four and five is really, really when I started to get motivated, and I really started to see a lot of results. You know happening and at the time I was actually getting geared up to go to Italy to sing at an opera and uh, while well, that was an absolute shit show that was one of the worst months of my life <laughs> to put it that way but uh, one of the most important things about this phase is I put myself in one of the most vulnerable positions of all time uh, you know, and I was getting really, really serious about health. I was actually kind of trying to build a uh, fitness business at the time. That didn't really pan out. Um, and, uh, you know, the reason why my Instagram has so many followers is because I, hell, I had thousands and thousands of posts of fitness content. Uh, but I took a lot of that down. There's a few fitness posts in there. Um, and, uh, you know, the reason why my Instagram doesn't get that much traction and that's and the reason why it loses a lot of followers now is because I, I, I post mostly fa fashion and beard content there now and you know so like people don't want to see that that's not what they that's not what they signed up for so they just leave and that's fine <laughs> and another kind of affirmation that I did indeed grow a beard with minoxidil is that it did not grow out evenly as you see the um, the mustache, uh, you know, was grew, grew out really, really tiny as everything else kind of like poofed out. Uh, I didn't know how to style my beard at the time. I didn't really care. I wasn't even using beard oil, which uh, it was just a scraggly, disgusting mess for the most part. Uh, you know, compared this to how my yeard grew out, uh, you know, like a year or so later, um, my yeard grew out proportionally, right? The mustache grew out with the beard and um, that was completely untouched and so was this for the most part, right? So it's kind of another indication that, uh, you know, like I, I most definitely did grow out my beard with minoxidil. And that's something I don't actually recommend. I don't recommend that you grow out your beard as you're applying minoxidil, you know, through the months. I do recommend that you keep it at a short stubble, but I wasn't really educated about a lot of that stuff and the implications of all of that. And I wanted a beard as fast as possible and I, I ended up getting it, but I was lucky as hell. And it would have been much easier if I had just shaved down to a shorter stubble more often. Uh, and that's what, always what I recommend, guys. And it was also in this phase that I was really, really getting into style as well. All of a sudden, and I don't know if I've told you guys, but in like high school, even, you know, first year of university. And uh, I was the least stylish individual of all time because I just did not give a fuck. Right. And there's, you know, there's something about that that is, you know, hey, good for you. You don't care. But that there's such there's so many limitations to that mentality because you are essentially sabotaging, uh, you know, your reputation, the way people perceive you. And I started to realize that and I said, hey, I'm getting, getting this really nice beard on. Why don't I get my fitness in order? Why don't I actually look good for the first time in my life? Start buying proper, you know, high quality hair products like Layrite instead of like, you know, just disgusting uh, dollar store products. Uh, like, why don't I start using beard oil? Why don't I start, you know, uh, kind of shaping it up a little bit? Like, why don't I just become a more respectful human being? And the pictures around month seven here, as you see, uh, are pictures of when I came back from Italy, so I hadn't got a haircut and hadn't had a beard trim in forever. Um, and so, yeah, as you can see, the beard is just <laughs> popped off like a, uh, just growing off my face like a parasite, um, you know, as my mustache is still, my mustache still hasn't gotten there yet, obviously. My mustache right now is probably one of the strongest parts of my beard. At that time, uh, wasn't looking up for my mustache. It still kind of looked small and 
kind of pathetic, but at, at the time I was really digging what I was rocking. And uh, around month eight is when the mustache, you know, actually started growing out on the end. And that's not always something that actually people get, um, unfortunately, and that kind of has to do with your genetics. Younger men just in general, it's, it's so rare for a young man like me to have a mustache. And, you know, so if it doesn't happen to you, you know, to the point where you can actually grow at the ends of your mustache, and most people don't even want that anyway, you know, um, you'll probably be called a hipster if you, grow, <laughs> if you grow it out, especially if you dress like me. So, and month nine here, as you can see, I have cheeks filling in nicely. Um, well, let's put it this way, guys. Um, it, like, they were definitely filling in quite a bit more at the time. And I think it's actually probably fair to say that maybe uh, they're probably just as good at month nine as they are now. My cheeks have never been the strongest part of my beard and they probably never will be. It's just the unfortunate reality. You know, I think this side is even worse for the most part. Um, the, my cheeks are not the strongest part of my beard. And typically, um, men that ascend their beard with minoxidil, with, uh, you know, like a couple exceptions here and there, you're probably not going to get the best beard in the world. Uh, even me, who on the surface, it appears that my beard, um, you know, is epic and it's so thick and full. Uh, there are so many glaring weaknesses within it and it's not me complaining or anything like that. But, you know, like the neck growth is so weak that, you know, if I grow it, you know, anywhere past here or so, it just gets so thin. And, um, you know, it, it just... Um, it totally overpowers the cheeks and it's just like uh, you're, you're probably not going to get the best beard in the world especially if you started at such a low baseline and historically within your family you just had uh, you know a lack of sensitivity to DHT and it's also very dependent upon your race and many other factors as well so uh, month 10 this is around the time I started to kind of look like a train conductor or something like that um, it was kind of brutal and uh, this is just, I think this is just kind of a testament to the fact that um, styling my beard for me personally is just a really important thing. Some people can just go wake up, beard bomb, and go, or you know, just wake up, comb, and go, uh, or whatever. Not me, guys. Uh, that kind of curly bunched up mess is not personally what I prefer. Um, and you know, uh, in a couple months from uh, month 10, I kind of realized that well, actually a barber kind of enlightened me about, um, you know, about that. Yeah, he saw how my beard looked. He, he goes, uh, like, do you want me to trim your beard? I'm like, no. Oh, it, it, so he didn't. He gave me a nice haircut and then he showed me, uh, you know, he took a, uh, a round brush and a blow dryer and he just went boom, 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 all around the beard. And I'm like, whoa, like, how did my beard get so long? How did, uh, and honestly guys, like it took me like um, at least five or six months before I, I even understood how he did that. Like um, to, to replicate what he did. Cause like it, he, he really got it in a really, really nice place. And I actually really, really appreciate what he showed me. And uh, well, I mean, like I always saw, uh, around this time I was watching a lot of videos from like Beard Brand and stuff like that. I probably started watching a lot of that um, around month five or something like that. And that was probably one of my most watched channels. And of course I was watching Scuba as well. <laughs> no, no, nowhere in my mind was I thinking that I would ever, uh, you know, uh, start a YouTube channel about beards, uh, which is crazy to me that I'm here now at 5k subscribers. Uh, <laughs> and thank you guys for, you know, following me along the whole ride. I really, really appreciate it. But uh, yeah, if we go forward here, um, yeah, <laughs> it's saying, yep, time for a trim. After the trim, uh, this particular trim wasn't too good. <laughs> uh, so I ended up coming, coming home and really fixing it myself. Uh, and that's kind of when I got into a little bit of beard trimming as well. But as you can see, the, the cheek line is coming in quite strong. Uh, I think it's fair to say that officially at this point, it was probably just as strong as it is now with no improvements whatsoever. Um, you know, uh, going forward. And maybe this is the genetic limit of my, uh, you know, potential for cheek coverage at this time. 
and it's also important to realize that uh, a lot of my cheek hairs are blonde in nature <laughs> and yeah <laughs> month month 12 guys i i, I think it, this is like one of the first times that i really started realizing like oh man okay this is <laughs> this is not normal results at all uh <laughs> you know like especially that side shot on the right there I started really realizing that what I have been given here is a is a gift, <laughs> and uh, um, and I think at this point I really started thinking, hmm, like, what can I do with this? I want to help other people achieve the same thing, uh, but of course I had still no in still no uh, idea of how to even begin making YouTube videos, although making a YouTube channel is something I wanted to do with the longest time nonetheless eventually you know this kind of month we really 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 solidified that in my mind uh, that uh you know uh going down the whole style you know the bearded style route was uh something that was really really cool and something i was interested in and almost obsessed about and as you can see month 13 is really when i started to dial things in i was kind of uh, slightly learning how to style my beard a little bit uh, although it was just mainly combing uh, and things of that nature just to get a little bit of shape going on but at this point I was like oh god like I could probably be a beard model someday or something like that or that's what was going in through my head <laughs> I love that picture on the right too <laughs> that, that you, leave a like and this man will not hunt you down uh, you know <laughs> yeah and then uh, month 14 I took quite a few inches off and I think uh Around this phase, I actually started realizing that maybe uh, shorter beard styles might be better on me. Uh, that was my initial thought, and I think um, that's probably true. This is not a short style, um, I guess. This is probably kind of more of a medium style uh, that I'm rocking right now. But, you know, uh, as we know from my beard, <laughs> longer beard styles ain't, ain't, ain't no go for me uh, personally. Way too much maintenance, a little more, way too much many things go wrong and to, you know translucency and all the uh, all the other things that come come along with that and uh, month 15 again I have a nice shape going on but uh, I haven't really learned how to style yet as you see everything's like kind of like all twisty and twirly I was using kind of a subbar subpar beard product at the time uh, I forget what beard oil I was using it wasn't very good it made my beard very dry and uh, I'm and I kind of assumed that that was, you know, oh, like this is okay. And then I tried other beard products and, you know, I uh, kind of came to the realization that, hey, <laughs> you know, there are good and bad beard products. There are beard products that react well with your beard and others that don't as much. And um, I think it was around this point I was really experiencing a lot of dryness too, you know, like a lot of, uh, a lot of dry flakes underneath my beard and things of that nature. But uh, obviously, a mustache dialed in really really nicely I think I started using mustache wax around this point if I'm not mistaken although I was, I, I was having a really hard time getting my mustache properly in place um, because I wasn't using a blow dryer um, which uh, obviously a mistake uh, in most cases not everything again no, not everyone has to use a blow dryer but uh, for me it's uh, pretty necessary and on month 16 here, um, these pictures right here, I, I kind of lied in the caption here, learned how to style the beard finally. Um, all those pictures you see here were that styling that I mentioned from that barber shop, you know, that that barber that, uh, you know, styled my beard in the barber shop. That's the styling he gave me. And uh, it, th this was the beginning of when I started to learn how to style my beard. You look from uh, month 16 to month one, and you know, you really see just a different man. And this is when I really started putting it all together that this is something I shouldn't squander. This is something that I should take advantage of. And well, I have. So I'm so I'm very thankful that uh, I was given the opportunity to, uh, you know, uh, bestow my knowledge and bestow my transformation with you guys and help you guys through your own and I get great comments every single day of saying hey man you help me out a lot well thank you I'm glad I could do that for you <laughs> and I love this part but then the shading started oh boy <laughs> I love that photo so much it looks so strange but yes so funny um so yeah I uh I, I 
I was getting quite a bit of shedding at the time, like to the point where like my cheek line was getting like all the way down to here. Like seriously, like all of this just fell right out, which is an indication that those hairs were not yet terminal. So it's a good thing that it happened, but like my beard just went to shit. Like seriously, like, it, it was not in a good place for a long time. It was like a month and a half to two months and you know in that place all you can really do guys is just keep applying consistently derma roll if you can and that's you know all you can really do you know just keep keep staying consistent don't get uh demotivated don't get scared uh i mean you can get scared all you want it's totally valid for you to get scared i, I know i was i was in the Minox beard spot like holy shit <laughs> this this uh you know shedding is just absolutely nuts uh and you know a lot of supportive fellas there so uh go check out the Minox beard spot and also my group of course beards barbells and banner uh but you know a little bit of bias there and here on this slide here where it says must mustache got super big at the time yeah it got pretty big just in general, I love that beard shape. It's, I mean, it's pretty similar to what I have here. Maybe a little bit smaller, a little more compact. Right now, I've, 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 I've very much learned how to, you know, style it in a way that it makes it look a little better than it does there. And I kind of had that indent going on there, which I don't like. I've managed to fix that since through styling routines and techniques. Actually, this heat brush here, Aberlite, uh, really helps. Uh, with that personally um, again discount code 10% with the code Hizar and as I kind of play through some of these last slides here of me you know styling my beard and walking through the fields with you know the final product um, I just kind of want to reflect on a few things so a lot of the, some of the things I kind of gained from this journey First off, I'm never going to say that I despise my appearance. I'm never going to say that, um, you know, I uh, well, that I was truly, truly, just deeply insecure about the way I looked. But you know, the things that came from this journey really helped me to come to the realization that, um, you know, taking care of myself is paramount. Uh, and obviously applying drugs to your face, uh, you know, does do damage. That that in itself is not taking care of myself. But what I more so mean is when the beard started to come in and it started to uh, change the shape of my face and the dynamic of my look. And I started to go, okay, let's take care of my skin. Let's take care of my hair. Let's take care of my appearance. Let's really get some nice outfits dialed in. Everything changed, guys absolutely everything and it's truly flung me into a whole kind of different realm of possibilities right i went from um well I, i've talked about this but um you know just a very anxiety ridden individual who uh knew nothing of his emotions was very unkind at many points in my life. I was not a kind individual. I, I believe I was not a compassionate individual. Many, many things about who I was was ugly, in my opinion. <laughs> and one of those one of those things is not inherently my face, but the way I took care of my face and everything surrounding it, including the people around me. And, you know, uh, again, I don't, I'm not going to say that Growing a monoxidal beard uh, drove me to take therapy and to marry a wonderful woman and uh, start a business, multiple businesses, rather, because I just started a photography business. But in a couple of years, it is absolutely 100% realistic for me to do this full time. Seriously, guys, that to me is insane. Uh, that I've gotten to this point with a mere 5,000 subscribers. I mean, obviously, Incredible growth. It, and, you know, if you ask people that knew me years and years ago, um, I was kind of a little shit. I truly, truly was. And, you know, uh, this whole journey of uh, self discovery uh, that started with the minoxidil journey and leaving university and all of that stuff that I mentioned earlier, 
has got me to the point where I think I've finally become a very compassionate and rational individual. I try not to lend, you know, too much credit to the monoxidal journey, but I have to lend just enough to say that it has effectively changed my life for the better, uh, hands down. And you see this a lot, actually. I'm obviously being a lot more dramatic than most individuals. Um, but uh, above all things, it helped me finally just destroy sloth, my slothful ways. That sometimes I kind of revert to, not gonna lie. Sometimes I become a, you know, I kind of uh, revert to old habits of procrastination. But needless to say, I have built something that I'm very, very proud of. And I'm so glad that you guys come and uh, come by and you. Uh, Listen to me talk like a lunatic for, uh, you know, I mean, this video is probably going to be super fucking, <laughs> super long. And sorry for the swear, swears, guys. I don't know. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm feeling a lot of things today. And hopefully I can just keep making things that add value to you guys. And teach you what to buy and what not to buy. And what to, what's going to make you look good. And what's going to make you smell good. What's going to, you know effectively make you respect yourself more and hopefully that rubs on if you respect yourself more and you respect others uh, to a much higher degree have a good night guys